네, 안녕하세요. 원영석입니다. 예, 오늘도 오베드 라이브를 애청해 주셔서 감사합니다. 예, 오늘은 특별히 어, 미국에서 가장 잘 나가는 어, 스타 논객 그리고 스타 라디오 진행자 그리고 팍스 뉴스에서도 어, 컨트리뷰러로 자주 출연하시는 분입니다. 분입니다. 어, 라리 엘더. 라리 엘더 모셨습니다. Hi Larry. Michael, how are you? I'm good. It's been a while. It's right? been a while. Three years. Lots right? of things have happened between now and then. Lots of things. Yeah, not, I think not least of which is Donald Trump got elected. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I remember that you, you know, Trump was your sev- your 17th favorite. Uh, um, no, out, out of the 17 candidates, he was my 20th. Oh, he was your 20th. Okay, okay I got mm-hmm. it wrong. <clears throat> and how do you like him so far? He's he's exceeded my expectations spectacularly. Wow. Until the coronavirus thing hit and the economy was shut down, the economy was rocking and rolling. And I know these are Trump talking points, but, but that doesn't mean they're not true. Uh, black unemployment was the lowest ever, uh, Asian unemployment lowest ever, Hispanic unemployment lowest ever. And uh, he's done something about illegal immigration. Uh, what he's done is change the rules for asylum. So now you can't travel through Mexico uh, and apply for asylum. So all of a sudden those stories are off the headlines. And that's important because um, <clears throat> studies have shown that unskilled illegal aliens compete for jobs that would otherwise be held by unskilled black yeah. and brown people and they put downward pressure on their wages. So that's very important to me. He's also uh, increased the amount of money he spends on, on historically black colleges and universities. That's something that a lot of black people like and want. Mm-hmm. He did what's called the First Step Act, which allows prisoners who feel that they've been sentenced to unduly long sentences have them reviewed. And as a result, about a thousand people, mostly black men, have had their sentences reduced by an average of 70 months. He pardoned the first black heavyweight champion of the world. That may not seem like something that's kind of silly and symbolic, but Jack Johnson was a, was a black heavyweight champion from 1906 to 1915, I think it was, the first black champion. And a law was passed uh, that was designed to get people uh, like him. And the law said you cannot transport a woman across state lines for, quote, illicit purposes. What the hell does that even mean? He had a white woman uh, that he was seeing, and they wanted to get him, and they convicted him of that. He fled the country. Uh, and as a result, he stayed out of the country for a number of years. Um, <clears throat> for 15 years or so, a lot of people like right. Sylvester Stallone and Ken Burns yep. uh, have tried to lobby both Republican and Democrat yes. presidents for their pardon. No one's done it, including Obama. This guy did it. Uh, and um, <clears throat> the, the main thing, though, Donald Trump has done uh, is he's advocated school choice. I cannot tell you how important that is. I went to a school, high school in, in town called Crenshaw High School, and right now, Last I heard, around 3% of the kids can do math at grade level. Now, what parent sends their kid to a school where only 3% of the kids can do math at grade level? And, by the way, a school that is run by the gang called the Crips. Who sends their kid to a school like that if they have a choice? The Democrats, because they're wedded to the teachers' union, are telling a parent in that geographical area, I'm sorry, you're sending your kid there whether you want to or not. Republicans would like to give that person a choice. That reason alone, I think that... A lot of uh, people are going to rethink their allegiance to the Democratic Party and may consider pulling the lever for Donald Trump. So for all those reasons, as a black person, I'm happy with with what he's done. As an American, I like that he's pulled out of the Iran deal. I like that he's pulled out of this uh, uh, Paris Accord, this climate change accord. Um, I like that he has uh, changed the rhetoric of cops from an anti-rhetoric standpoint that Obama had to a pro-cop standpoint. Uh, And, of course, I love all the things he's done with the economy, especially the reduction of regulations that people don't get a lot of, give him a lot of credit for because you can't see it. You can't tell that he's reduced the burden of a business person by reducing the the regulation. But the same thing is is, is lowering taxes. And um, for that reason, we've had this tremendous economy, despite the, the predictions of people like Paul Krugman, who's an economist who writes for the New York Times, and said we were going to have a depression. They were all wrong. And um, if, if it weren't for what I call Trump derangement syndrome, people would, I think, be praising this guy for all the, all the stuff he's done. He's calmed down the Middle East. He's moved the embassy from, uh, from Tel, Aviv Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, something that both Republican and Democrat presidents all promised to do and, didn't, did. and didn't do it. And he let the Palestinians know, uh, this is a new sheriff in town. You keep making a bunch of stupid demands, uh, and we'll just let the Israelis do what they're going to do. And as a result, in my opinion, things are a lot calmer. Rocket Man is quiet, despite uh, the, the, the bellicosity and despite the fears. People thought that Trump was going to get us into a third or fourth world war, depending upon where you think we are right now. So when I look around the world, I'm looking at a world that's mostly at peace until this coronavirus pandemic hit and that ridiculous response to it. Uh, the economy was doing well. Immigration was under control. Uh, I love the judges that he's been putting on the Supreme Court. Remember, we're just one judge away from ruling that the 
the fourth that the uh, Second Amendment does not have uh, a, a right for a, a citizen to keep and bear arms. Uh, it was five four the so-called Heller, Heller case where a, a law in D.C. forbade a a police officer uh, a, a security guard from bringing home his own firearm. What is that? And um, that's what the city council in D.C. passed, and by 5-4 ruling, the Supreme Court struck it down. That means only one vote would have gone the other way. So it's very tenuous, very important, in my opinion, to have people on the Supreme Court who understand the Constitution, that it's designed to limit the government, leaving everything else to the, to the citizens and to the, to the states. So I'm very, very happy with what President Trump has done. Have I liked all the tweets? Have I liked all the things he said? Of course not. But <clears throat> I think I might have told you this the last time we talked. I... Um, was watching a, a program some years ago, and these two golfers on the Golf Channel were asked, how can you tell a, golf, a golfer is a good golfer? Mm -hmm. And one of them said, well, I look to see where his feet are, I look to see whether his right arm is locked, does he put his pivot in, into the ball, does he keep his uh, Big, long, beautiful, eloquent mm -hmm. description of what makes a good golfer. The other one went, I look to see where the ball lands. <laughs> I like where the ball has been landing. The swing may not be pretty, mm -hmm. he may be bragging about his game, he may even be cheating. Mm -hmm. But I like where the ball's landing. Got it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think I like all the things that you just laid out right now. You know, I think President Trump probably will, in my opinion, you know, he's, he's in the history books about his, just by his accomplishment-wise, I mean, before this coronavirus thing happened. But, and I recently uh, checked out a Rasmussen poll, and he's hitting... 40% approval rating among the blacks. Do we, can we believe that poll, or what, what is your take I, on that? I, I consider it to be an outlier. Uh, Rasmussen okay. is often an outlier, but uh, in 2016 it was pretty accurate. No, I don't think it's had that high. Okay. Uh, I think it's probably closer to, to 15 or 20%, and okay. even that would be pretty substantial. Because he got 8%. He right? got 7 or 8%. And, and Michael, he's doing all of this stuff against tremendous headwinds. Not only did much of his own party uh, not expect him to win and didn't want him to win, but Democrats hate his guts, the media hates his guts, and we know about this bogus Trump collusion investigation from all these holdover from the Obama it's administration who thought they were doing God's work by stopping this fascist, this, uh, this Russian ally from coming into office. And as a result, they took the thinnest of evidence and, and fabricated this case against him for two and a half years. And then, and then all of a sudden this phone call he has with the Ukraine uh, president is quid pro quo and he gets impeached. And, and a quarter of Democrats did not show up for his inaugural. Can you imagine if a quarter of Republicans didn't show up for Barack Obama's inaugural? When, when those Republicans died, the first line of their obituary would be, so-and-so just died, a man who didn't show up for Barack Obama, the first black president's inaugural. Yeah, and then about, about a dozen boys. would have all been treated as a racist, right? Right. Yeah. And about a dozen of them boycotted his first State of the Union speech. Yeah. And so uh, he was dogged by the 25th Amendment because somebody wanted to invoke that because they thought he was mentally unfit. That's why he had to put his doctor on to give that press conference about how fit he was. So he'd been accused of being mentally unfit, of being a fascist, of being a Russian ally, of, being a, a, uh, of, of pressuring the Ukraine government into a quid pro quo to go after a political enemy, and he's still standing. That is stunning to me. And he's taken on the media and called him fake news, and it's about time because Lord knows that for two and a half years, especially MSNBC, went after him with a vengeance for the thinnest of reasons because they hate his guts. And he, stu he stood on. You know, there's, a, there's an adage that politicians always abided by until Trump. Never make an enemy out of somebody who can buy ink by the barrel. I'm sure you've heard that. You're in the newspaper business. He's made an enemy out of people yeah, who can yes. buy ink, uh, ink uh, yeah. by the barrel. He did. And he, and he stood him down because he has his own platform. It's called social media. It's called Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And he, he can communicate now to the American people without having to go through CNN and ABC and NBC and CBS, all of which hate his guts. Breitbart reported that his coverage has been 91% negative by ABC, NBC, CBS, nightly, nightly news, depending upon the period being observed. 91%? Economy best ever? The world's at peace? He's winding down some of these entanglements that we're in, and he gets 91% negative. It's because that's what you're focusing on. You're focusing on some stupid tweet he did, focusing on some statement he made, some promise he made that he, that he took back. Who cares? Yeah. Focus on where the ball has landed. And this has been the most unfair coverage I've ever seen. So if you're asking me, can he get reelected, there are three things that are against him this time. Uh, he will no longer have the element of surprise. He was underestimated the first time. Yes. That's why Hillary didn't set foot in Wisconsin. Uh, they just knew he was not going to win. Uh, the second thing is they've got plenty of money. Because of the Trump economy, uh, the uh, coffers of the opposition are quite full. And he made them rich. Too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because a rising tide lifts all boats, including the boats of your enemy. 
And the third reason is they hate his guts with a passion, a, almost a pathological fa passion that I have never seen. I thought they hated Reagan. I thought they hated Nixon. I thought they hated George W. Not Bush because of, because of the war. Not at this level. Not he this can't level. do anything. Do, do you think anybody <clears throat> else would have with, you know, withstand all this? I don't think. No. I, I only think Donald Trump can be the only person who can withstand all the incoming. Like That's this. right. I, I don't think. I don't think any other person could have beaten Hillary. Could have gotten elected. Um, and I think the average person would have mailed it in by now. I think there are times during this administration where the average person would have said, what's the point? Mm -hmm. I've done all this stuff. I've sacrificed all of this. My net worth has declined, not increased. They think I'm, I've done this for money. They think I'm a Russian spy. They think I'm a Russian asset. Everybody in my family has been criticized, including my wife. Screw this. I think a, I think a lesser person would have done that. Um, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm quite impressed. It was not, uh, as I said, he was not my choice, yeah. my first choice. I thought, he, I thought he said a lot of things that he shouldn't have said. And I ended up campaigning for him and with him. And I had about a 10-minute conversation with him privately once. One-on-one? One-on-one. This is one -on -one. when he was a candidate. Oh. And I said, I said, Mr. Trump, there is something that I think you should apologize for. And what did you say? He said, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say what I said about uh, John McCain. I said, no it's, no, it's not. I said, I couldn't care less. I said, you should apologize for saying George W. Bush lied us into the Iraq war. Oh, okay. Yeah. I said, he did not lie us into the war. You may disagree with or going to the war. The that's, that's fair enough. You know. The intelligence uh, was, was, uh, was reported in good faith. It's been analyzed and, and scrutinized. Now I don't believe the intelligence either because of what James Comey did to, you know, the well, Russia Well, well now, we, now, now we know how unreliable our intelligence yeah. is, but they relied on it. Uh, and so they relied on it in good faith. And I said, this has been investigated by a commission set up by Congress. Nobody lied. And it's a talking point that the, that the Democrats use, and it's probably one of the biggest scars on the Republican brand in recent history. And for you to, to, to reiterate that uh, is, is undermining your own party uh, and, and, in my opinion, undermining the country. And what did he say? He went, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, Michael, <laughs> but he is anti-war. But, but, Michael, you've never heard him say it again. And, oh, I, that's and, true, and, that's I, and I've noticed that Donald Trump's way of apologizing is not to say not the to same say the dumb thing twice. So I'm going to take credit for that. Okay, okay, that's good on you. Okay, now Atlanta is on fire because of uh, Rayshard Brooks' death right. uh, that happened on the 12th. Mm -hmm. uh, he got shot twice in the bag in front of the uh, Wendy's restaurant. Right, which, 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 which has sent, been, since been set on fire. Why Wendy's has to be set on fire it's because, on fire, because yeah. police officers did something in front of it is beyond me, but that's another, another question. Right. That's wrong. Yeah. That's what, what I think is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your take on that? Did you check out the video clip? I did. I saw the video clip clip. And obviously the, the investigation is early. Yeah. We always learn more and almost always people get it wrong at first. So ha with all those caveats, mm -hmm. um, let me start out by saying I guess I missed the part where when my parents gave me the talk that people always talk about that black parents give their kids. By the way, every parent gives their kid the talk. Yes. I don't know any parent that does not yeah. do that. To me it's irresponsible not to. Mm -hmm. They but, have to. But, right. but since it's become a thing to say that black parents get the talk, uh, I will ha happily admit that my parents sat me down and my brothers and gave us the talk. And I don't remember them adding the part after they said be polite and fully cooperate. I don't remember them adding the part that said violently arrest, resist and if possible <laughs> run. That part I don't remember, maybe I stepped out of the, bath out of the room for the bathroom uh, when they said that. Um, my, my starting proposition with all these, all, all these cases, and I think with few exceptions it applies, had the suspect complied, he or she would still be alive. Now, that doesn't, doesn't excuse the officer for behaving badly, yeah, sure. but these things could have been avoided in the first place if people had simply complied. And why it is that, that our so-called black leaders don't say that uh, is beyond me. Uh, I say that I'm being called an Uncle Tom. All I'm doing is reiterating the same instructions my parents gave me. Um, and, and my father said, when you pull over when you're driving, make sure your left hand is at 10 o'clock, your right hand is at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Say yes, sir. Say no, sir. Make sure your paperwork is in order. And if you are mistreated, make sure you get a badge number and you and I will go downtown and deal with it while we're both still alive. You can still complain about yeah, it, right? Yeah, while I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Instead of, as opposed to a wrongful death suit. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so that's my initial reaction. The second thing, though, is about the officer's conduct. What I saw was a struggle. Yeah. What I saw was a suspect who took an officer's taser. The suspect ran away and then turned around and pointed it at the officer. Now, if I'm an officer and I'm running, I don't know whether you have a taser pointed at me or a firearm. And even if I think it's a taser, that could, that could debilitate me. And then you get my gun and shoot me. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, he made a gesture that made him uh, a person who is threatening serious bodily harm, if not death. So, as far as I'm concerned, once he turned around and pointed at the taser, uh, he, got what, he got what he got. Uh -huh. 
and there'll be a big investigation. Uh, the officer's already been fired. I think that's unfair. The police are going to file a counterclaim on that. And if and when this gets in front of a jury, I'm telling you, Michael, there's a good chance that the jury will find this officer not guilty. In which case, if we're going to have another riot, I think it's irresponsible not to, not to tell people's, people there, not to set up people's expectations. Let's take Floyd, uh, George Floyd for a moment. That's the one in, um, uh, Minneapolis. in Minneapolis, and there were four officers involved. Yeah. All four fired on the spot. Nonsense. One of them was arrested and charged. The others have now been charged. And they were having, um, having riots. The vice president of city council is a black female. Uh, the uh, next door mayor of, of St. Paul is a, is a black uh, man. The mayor of Minneapolis is a left-wing Democrat. Uh, the attorney general of the state of, of Minnesota is a black man. Uh, and the congresswoman who governs that district is Ilan Omar. Now, Ilan Omar. Uh, what, what makes <laughs> us believe that whatever happens will not be thoroughly investigated? I mean, I thought the whole point behind having people of color in positions of responsibility is that when something goes down, you can be assured that the investigation will be thorough and will be fair. So you have all these people uh, who are in people of color in positions of leadership, and we're still rioting. And, and take L.A. You and I are in L.A. L.A. for 10 years, from 1992 to 2002, had back-to-back -back black police chiefs. The uh, city is roughly 40% Hispanic. Uh, the, the LAPD is roughly 50% Hispanic. The city is about 30% white. So is the LAPD. The city is about 8.5%, 9% black. The LAPD actually is a little higher than that, about 9.5% uh, black. Uh, and the rest are, are uh, Asian Pacific Islanders. So the LAPD pretty much mirrors exactly what the city yeah. is, had back-to-back -back black police chiefs, and we still had, had uh, disturbances and, and riots. Mm -hmm. So it has nothing to do with, the, with whether or not the police department is diverse. Um, and I think if people want to riot for reasons that are, that are uh, uh, false, they're going to do it. And the false assumption is that the police are going out and mowing down black like people. Like a systemic uh, Systemic. When, when, when in fact, it is rare. Uh, the Washington Post last year said there were nine black people who were shot and killed by the police, around 15 people killed by the black people, uh, unarmed black people killed by the police last year. There were 19 unarmed white killed, uh, shot and killed by the police. Uh, and you add on the others that were, that were killed by the police without well, a fight. Some point out that percentage-wise, percentage black is still higher than their, you know, Well, that's true. Uh, 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 blacks were two and a half times more yeah. likely to be shot and killed by the police. However, blacks were... Young black men are eight times more likely to be a victim of a homicide compared to a white person. So when you look at criminal rates, rates of offending, you can make the case that one would think that blacks should be shot more often than they are uh, when you consider the, uh, the, the crime rate. And think about homicide. Uh, of the homicides in this country, half of them are black victims, even though blacks are just 13% of the population. Uh, and um, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, um, about 70% of the homicides are black on black, and about 75% of those, it's by the, the way, are, are unsolved. It's the most dangerous city in America, right? It's it, Chicago, right? No, it's, it's, it's in absolute numbers it is. And, and again, these are just, just communities in the, in the east and south side of Chicago. The rest of Chicago is perfectly safe. Um, it's certain areas. In terms of per capita homicides, St. Louis and Baltimore are three times worse mm. than Chicago. Chicago has about 17, 000, uh, 17 uh, homicides per 100,000. And Baltimore and St. Louis have around 51 per 100,000. Far more dangerous than uh, Chicago. But, but Chicago is bigger, so it's bigger absolute numbers, and that's what people focus on. But in terms of per capita homicides, St. Louis, Baltimore, far worse. And by the way, all of these cities are led by Democrat mayors. Mm -hmm. And Derek Chauvin and George Floyd, they used to work together in the same bar, right? Yeah. The, and there's one some, was working inside and one was yeah, working outside. Yeah, there's some relationship between the two of them. We're still finding out about that. We don't, know, don't, we, we don't really know. Yeah. But, I, but I wanted people in Minneapolis to have their expectations set realistically because there's a good chance uh, that uh, the outcome may not be the outcome you like. Uh, second degree homicide, which, which requires intent. Uh, do you really think the guy got up in the morning and said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kneel on the black guy's neck in front of a whole bunch of people for eight minutes and I'll just slowly kill him to death. That's what I'm going to do. That, that's, do you think he froze? Or? I think he behaved irresponsibly. Uh, I, I don't think he realized how much pressure he had on. I think that uh, George Floyd had, uh, had comor comorbidities. He had just taken drugs as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you add it all up together, you had a very fragile suspect, and um, uh, Darren Shavin is going to defend himself by saying, how was I supposed to know? Okay. So uh, I think he might, you might be able to get him for involuntary manslaughter or something like that, but I don't think the other officers are, were complicit at all.
especially the one that's been there for a couple of days. Yeah. I, I'm on the force for two or three days, and I have a I, senior I officer, a and he's applying yeah. some pressure on a suspect. And I'm supposed to assume that that's not the right kind of pressure. I'm supposed to estimate how much pressure he, it was. I'm supposed to assume it was deadly pressure. And I'm supposed to jump in and do something about it. And I've been here for two days. I don't think so. And so um, I don't think the others are going to be, be found guilty of much of anything. So I just want the people of Minneapolis to have their expectations set low, because if I'm a criminal defense attorney, I have a lot to work with. And the Minneapolis uh, council members, they want to get rid of the police force. They, are, they already right. voted to do that, to disband it. The mayor is against it uh, somehow, the, the liberal as he is, right? What do you think is going to happen with that? Is, is this just a show because they want to just calm down the people's... You know, so, the somebody once this? said, I can't take credit for this, that... Um, uh, Donald Trump didn't start this, but he popped the zit and the crazy came out. Okay. Uh, a lot of people on the left are just flat out dead crazy. A lot of young people have a more positive view of socialism than they do of capitalism. Yeah. What is that? They live in a capitalist country. They're taking advantage of all the products and goods and services made by capitalist people. Uh, and yet they're denouncing the very system that made them happy and, 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 and give them the, the comfort and the leisure to complain about the things they complain about. Something just hit me, you know, um, probably capitalism spoils you that much so that you can even root for mm -hmm. socialism. Probably that's what, what happened. Well, you're, you're joking, but that's exactly the evolution of, of for example, Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. Take Sweden. Sweden got wealthy using free market capitalism and free trade. Then they got wealthy, and then in come the liberals in the 70s and made this big welfare state. So while uh, Sweden is still prosperous, it, it's not growing and, and prospering nearly to the degree that it did before all these leftists came over and imposed all these rules and regulations and increased all the taxes and, and nationalized this and nationalized that. So uh, if these are trade-offs. You can have a, a society that grows less if you want, I suppose, where people are homogeneous uh, and where people are willing to make less money. Um, and really creative people leave and come, place, come to places like, uh, like, um, like America. You can have that trade-off if you want. Or you can have a rock and roll uh, country where we recognize that people are not going to be equal uh, and where life is not fair mm -hmm. and where, where we don't try to correct things that God couldn't correct. Yeah. That you, can, you can decide what kind of country you want to live in, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go back to the Rayshard uh, Brooks situation. Mm -hmm. Is there like a stat, because you are like a genius of all these stats about, you know, uh, especially r racial stats, is there a stat of blacks resisting of cops or whites resisting of cops or, you know, Asians? Um, well, yeah. The, the, Washington, the Washington Post has done a pretty good job every year of, of analyzing the nearly 1,000 people killed by the police every year. And in the last five years, it's been about the same. Uh, about 500 of, of them have been white, 250 of them have been black. Okay. The rest of them have been racist okay. people they can't determine. Of that number, less than 4 or 5% have been uh, people killed who were unarmed. Okay. Unarmed does not mean not dangerous. Michael Brown was unarmed. Yes. Michael Brown's DNA was on Officer Darren Wilson's firearm. Mm -hmm. That made him dangerous. Mm -hmm. Trayvon Martin, while not killed by a police officer, was killed by a neighborhood watch person. Zimmerman. He was unarmed. Uh, and his, um, on his knuckles, they found uh, bruises where he was banging um, uh, Zimmerman's head into the yeah, ground. Yeah. And Zimmerman then got the gun and mm -hmm. shot him. Mm -hmm. So just because you're unarmed doesn't mean you're not dangerous. Exactly. But mm -hmm. let's assume they're all mm -hmm. uh, not dangerous and unarmed. It's a tiny percentage. All the rest of them were resisting with a weapon or violent re violently resisting or resisting with what people perceived to be a weapon. There was some years ago, uh, an immigrant named Amadou Diallo was killed in New York. And the police assumed falsely that he was a suspect because he more or less fit the description. And they asked him to show his hands and he went for his wallet to show him ID and he got killed. Well, he was unarmed, but is that an unlawful shooting? No, it wasn't. So just by looking at the stat, an unarmed black person was killed, you don't know the underlying story. When you get the underlying story, you're coming, you get down to a handful of things every year, a tiny handful that are arguably questionable. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and juxtapose that to the 7,000 blacks who kill other blacks every single year. Mostly, mostly young blacks killing other blacks, many of, the, many of the gang related. So the real question then becomes to me, not are the cops disproportionately killing black people, the real question should be, why are black people disproportionately committing crime? And that gets down to the family. And forget about Larry Elder, Barack Obama once said, a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. And 70% of black kids are now raised without fathers. The number was 25% uh, over 50 years ago. And in 50 years, the percentage of black kids born outside of wedlock has rapidly increased. And to me, it's increased parallel to the amount of money we're spending on the welfare state.
And what we've done with the welfare state is we've incentivized women to marry the government. We've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And it's not just affecting the black community. 25% of white kids are now born outside of wedlock. Nearly half of all Hispanic kids are born outside of wedlock. It's even had, had a slight impact in the Asian community uh, that frowns on kids being born outside of wedlock. So when you incentivize bad behavior, you get more of it. And what we've done is we've, been, we've incentivized women to marry the government. And we've incentivized men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And we're not even having a discussion about that. It's a very tragic situation. Mm -hmm. um, so even uh, we were talking about it uh, right before we went to the studio about Drew Brees' situation about you know the New Orleans right. Saints right. Uh, quarterback. He had to apologize regarding the mm -hmm. you know, saluting to the American flag. What do you think about? What is your take well, on this? Whole thing? When uh, we started talking, you asked me about um, my getting my own TV show. Oh yeah, uh, on, on, a, on one of the cable <laughs> networks. And I just asked you, Michael, just think about all the things I've been talking in the half hour we've been speaking. If I were on a show and I just said them, what would happen? Um, there'd, there'd be a whole bunch of black people, a whole bunch of angry people, Al Sharpton, a bunch of people uh, writing, uh, calling sponsors. Sponsors that would, would You've it, been would, talking about this on your radio show all the time. They don't protest well, your radio they, show? They, they, they did. And when I was at KBC, I almost lost my show because of a, of a boycott against me. 790. 790. And I, in my opinion, KBC handled, handled it badly, and I almost lost my show. The Is that the reason why? Now I, now I know. I, I was wondering why, you know... Um, you're not at 790. Well, I, no, that was that was well okay. early in my career. All right, okay, no, the it. reason I'm not there is it's a whole different, okay, whole, whole, different whole different right. reasons. Right. But right. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying at, at a time in my career, uh, it, my career was almost strangled because of that. And the reason I'm protected now is because I work for an organization called Salem, which is a Christian-based organization, very conservative. They're socially conservative, uh, fiscally conservative, spiritually conservative, uh, and they believe in this. And all of their sponsors believe in the message. So when the sponsors get the calls, and they do. They stand fast. Uh, if McDonald's gets a phone call, if, if uh, uh, United Airlines gets a phone call, uh, if G GM gets a phone call from a bunch of black people saying, you, saying this guy Larry Elder is on TV saying that, that uh, if you look at the stats, one could argue that the police are shooting blacks less often than they ought to be shooting them. Yeah. No one's going to like that. I said it as carefully as I could, yeah. but it's going to be interpreted. Larry thinks blacks should be shot more often. It doesn't matter. I was on Fox once. And I was talking about the welfare state and how it's destabilized the family. It really hasn't, people say it's caused a breakdown. It really is a non-formation. It hasn't even formed a break. And I said on, on, on Fox and Friends, even during slavery, a black child was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father. I repeat, even during slavery, a black kid was more likely than today to be born under a roof with a biological mother and biological and father. And all hell broke loose. Headline, Elder says blacks better off during <laughs> slavery. But that's, that's wrong, though. The title's wrong. Of what course, you're saying is just a stat. You, of course it's wrong. What I'm saying is this is what happens to, to conservatives, let alone black conservatives, by the media, by the left. Uh, well, we can and, fight back now. You can fight back with you know, talk radio. You, I, I can saying. fight back with my platform, but I'm just telling you, if I'm a hiring person, and I have Larry Elder in front of me and somebody else who's not going to have the same kind, of, same kind of sizzle and heat. I'm not going with the sizzle and the heat because my job is to put on a program that generates money. And if, if my customers, meaning, meaning sponsors, get, get letters and email, look at Drew Brees. Drew Brees made the most innocuous statement you could make. I will never agree with somebody who disrespects the flag. Okay, neither will I. He apologizes, takes back the statement. The NFL apologizes. This is where we are now. There was a, there's an editor at Philadelphia Inquirer. Been there for 20 years. He approved a headline about a story having to do with the protesters burning up buildings. And the headline included the line, all buildings matter. <laughs> Staff erupted. He apologized. He used uh, mm -hmm. bad, bad judgment. He's resigned. New York Times, editorial page editor, approved an op-ed piece written by an Tom incumbent Cotton. senator, Tom Cotton. Tom Cotton. Not, not a, Tom Cotton is nobody's flamethrower. He's not. And all the, all the piece said is that if these things get out of hand, we're going to have to call in the National Guard, which, by the way, is the majority position of yeah, America. Exactly. And New York Times and, is a far-left paper. And, and, and Tom Cotton, again, is not some fringe guy. He's articulating the point of view held by the, by the, by the majority of the Republican Party. Don't you want to know how Republicans think, even if you're a left-wing newspaper? Yeah, exactly. So they had an op-ed piece, and 800 staffers complained the guy has now resigned, and the New York Times said they're going to now revisit their guidelines for when they approve an op-ed piece. 
Are you kidding me? So, for all these reasons, we're in what, what some people call a cancel culture. I don't. I call it a revenge culture. Where all these young people who have been taught by Hollywood, by academia and media, that they're victims yeah. and that these people over here are bad guys and now they're in positions of responsibility and they are exacting revenge. So what I think is, uh, sometimes I say to, you know, to my show, um, on my show, I, I say the, the mainstream media, New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, they're like acting like a criminal entity. You know, they do not report the things that they're supposed to report about, right. like Spygate. Right. Thing. I think that's really huge. Right. Isn't it bigger than Watergate? In my opinion, I, I it think is. it's the most. I think it's the biggest political story I've ever seen. And so did Brit Hume. And Brit Hume is, is no flamethrower. He used to be no. the the White House correspondent for ABC News mm -hmm. for crying out loud. He has said that, and their heads were in the sand on that. Uh, but they were pushing and pushing and pushing this bogus uh, Russia, Russia collusion story for two and a half years because they felt it was going to hurt Donald Trump's uh, popularity. Um, and then they, they pushed this story about uh, the quid pro quo thing because they felt it might lead to his impeachment. Um, I've never seen a more one-sided impeachment. Not a single Republican in the House voted uh, uh, to impeach him. And only one uh, senator voted to convict him, and that was Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney. On, on one charge. It's the most one-sided impeachment and one-sided trial in the Senate ever. And the New York Times got Pulitzer Prize for all those, yeah. you know, about their investigation right. about the Russia collusion. But I, I, if you I, I, actually think about it, I think I got to give them back. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's that's what I'm saying. And if you think about the Russia collusion, didn't it happen on the Democrat side? You know, they were the ones who hired uh, Fusion oh, yeah. GPS, you know, Perkins Coy Fusion hired, GPS, and they hired, you know, Christopher Steele. Right, and they got that bogus dossier they, from they, the yeah, Russians, yeah, right? Yeah, from the from the very start, this whole thing was fabricated by the Democrats. Uh, the only question is, how far does it go? And what the real motivation was. Did they sincerely believe that Donald Trump was a Russian asset, or did they sincerely believe, or did they sincerely want to believe Donald Trump was a Russian asset? And I think, I think it's door number two. I think it's probably they committed a lot of crimes, and since Trump came to the White House, and now he, he knows about all right. this because he's a president, he gets all these in intelligence reports. And he, they are worried about what's going to happen to them right. legally. Right. I think that's the reason why they want to take, you know, take Trump down. But right now we know that the investigation is ongoing you mm -hmm. know we have john durham who was appointed by william barr right. attorney general william barr john durham is investigating the origins of mm -hmm. russia collusion to me that sounds like the fabrication of the russia collusion who who fabricated this mm -hmm. whole thing to me it sounds like john brennan uh, james Cla james clapper james comey might all be in cahoots yeah, of all this we're, we're going to find all that out and we're going to find all that out to be true but remember barr warned that this is an investigation that will not likely lead to any criminal charges against some of these bigger name people. So we're going to find out what happened. We're going to find out the thin evidence on which they made all these accusations, the thin basis upon which they got the FISA warrant. We're going to find out that the desire to interpret the evidence as negatively toward Trump as possible. And that is very, very short of a criminal uh, enterprise. Yeah. And so that's probably what we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I supported Barack Obama back in 2008, 2012. I think I already told you that. My, my condolences. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, Obama's administration, I, I wouldn't say Barack Obama is, but Obama's administration sounds like the most corrupt administration that I've ever seen. Is that a correct uh, assessment? Well, if they you had, just see, they had, they go had, by the Spygate, they had, they had a lot of scandals. Uh, Spygate uh, leading leading the charge, and, and, and the, the Hillary uh, uh, email scandal. Most Americans, by the way, believe that she broke the law yeah, and, and thought did. thought that she should have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act. We had Fast and Furious. We had the IRS. Lois Lerner uh, IRS email scandal. We had the uh, Bergdahl deal, where yeah. Obama said he was a hero when in fact he wasn't. Um, the Iran deal, even right. the way they, you know, um, he, he, he let go 26, almost, you yeah, know, a terrorist right, suspects. Right, right. Um, and um, and, gave and, and, and even, even um, pulling all the troops out of Iraq, most people don't consider that to be a, a scandal. Oh, that's huge. That's but, he, huge. but he very yeah. slowly put back about 4,000 and then blamed, blamed it on George W. Bush, said that the memorandum of understanding uh, uh, tied his hand. B.S. Uh, George W. Bush had negotiated a deal to provide missile defense for the for the Poland and for the Czech Republic, and one of the first things that um, Obama did when he came in is renege on that deal. So his hands weren't tied by anything uh, George W. Bush had done. But instead of manning up and saying, "I screwed up when I called ISIS JV, and therefore I had to send people back," he just said, "Well, my hands were tied." And to my knowledge, there's never been a documentary on CNN about yeah. Obama's decision to pull all these troops out. And by the way. He pulled them out against the advice of his Secretary of Defense, against the advice of his Secretary exactly. of State, against the advice of his National Security Advisor, against the advice of the Joint Chiefs, against the advice of the Ambassador to Iraq, 
Um, he was opposed by virtually every Everybody, single right. uh, major voice in his well, administration against, there, against right? the CIA, yeah, right. uh, the CIA head. They all said, Mr. President, you pull these troops out, you're going to create a vacuum into which terrorists are going to flow. Oh, no, they won't. Terrorists fl flew, uh, created the vacuum, they, in, in, in they went, and gradually, very slowly, he put back about 4,000 troops. And nobody ever estimated how many people died, how many civilians died as a result of his precipitous, rash, foolish decision to pull all those troops out that led to greater violence. How many people died? How, how much blood is on his hands for having done something that his entire staff advised him to, against doing? I don't know, because nobody, nobody cares. Do you think the Democratic Party has completely gone too far left right now? Yes. I mean, some of the things, to me, some of their standing looks very corrupt, either corrupt or I don't know what they are. Uh, well, what they, they are right they've, now. they've gone left for a very long period of time. Um, the, it's, hard, it's hard to say when you, when you say, well, they really went left this time because virtually everything they've done has gone left. Raising taxes on rich people. Um, the, universal health coverage. Defund the police. Uh, national rent control. Uh, Green New Deal. Reparations. Um, uh, free college tuition. Debt forgiveness. These are some of the, of the mainstream positions of that party now. And Joe Biden, uh, normally what happens is you run to the left to get the nomination, and then you run to the center to, to, win, to the win the election. Joe Biden, is, it seems to me, he's still in that left camp. Mm -hmm. he, he boxed himself in a corner by saying his female running mate is going to be a female. And because of the things that, that Joe Biden has said about black people recently, like saying, if you don't know whether or not you want me yeah. or, or Trump, you ain't really black, he apologized for that. So now the pressure is going to be on him to have a black running mate um, Who and, do you think is going to be his running mate? Well, given the pressure he's under, it's going to be somebody like Kamala Harris, Kamala maybe. Harris. Um, in which case, you're going to have a, a lefty with another lefty, and that's not going to help him uh, in, in, the, in the general. So you, the question was, is, has the party gone too far to the left? The answer is hell yeah, and, and, and continuing. And continuing, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, you think, Joe, you just said Joe Biden has a better chance? This year, winning in, in, I think, in I November? Think he, I, think he, I think Donald Trump... I mean, just objectively speaking. Yeah, I think Donald Trump's fight is going to be more difficult uh, in 2020 than in 2016. They, they're, they're not going to underestimate him. They've got plenty of money, as I said, and they despise him. And so every weapon they have will be directed towards this man. And uh, he's the most popular Republican within the party I've ever 96%, seen. 96%, right? Even more, popu yeah. even more popular than, than Reagan. Ronald Reagan. So Republicans love him. But the numbers of people that call themselves Republican is somewhat smaller. The number of people who call themselves independent is somewhat larger. You add the people that are independent and are Democrats, and it outnumbers Republicans pretty substantially. So you're asking a lot of so-called independents to vote for a guy who's been maligned by the media as, as a Hitler, as a Stalin, as a fascist, who's been accused by the media of, of not properly handling the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus, the coronavirus pandemic, mm -hmm. and who's been accused of all sorts of, of, uh, of failings, large and small. Um, and if I'm somebody who watches Fox News, I, of course, have a different perspective. But a lot of Americans wouldn't watch Fox News if you paid them. They're watching CNN, they're watching MSNBC, they're, they're reading the New York Times, or they're getting their news from yahoo.com. But actually, not a lot of people actually read New York Times. No, they're in Washington no, Post, no, right? No, 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 but they get their news from aggregate sources, like, 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 uh, like, like CNN, according to New CNN, York Times, CNN or, or Yahoo, and they'll print the stuff that's in, that's in the New York Times. Yeah. It'll, it'll still dominate the media. You know, the, the, the stories about uh, collusion, they were primarily coming out of the New York Times and the Washington Post, was. and they dominated and controlled yeah. everything. Everybody else reprints it. So, so those still, are the two figureheads, you know, that's the most corrupt thing that's going on in, in the United States. I think, you know, uh, right now in America, the biggest problem that we face is the media. And pretty well, much it's New well, York Times, Washington Post, CNN, these well, three well, media and, and they're even admitting it. Uh, the longtime CB head, head of CBS News is a guy named Van Gordon Saunter. He just wrote a piece in the Wall Street Journal where he said, the media's gone crazy. We, we, we've, we've gone nuts. They, they, nuts. They, they, they've become so partisan. And he said the only salvation is for the media to, 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 to man up and say, we are left-wing. That's not going to happen. We are left-wing. But my point is, this was the former head of CBS News admitting this. When Bernard Goldberg wrote a book called yeah. Bias that came out about 20 that. years ago, he had been at CBS News for 28 years. Yeah. And he has a, a section in the book where he approaches uh, the head of the news division and he complains about the bias. And the head of the news division, his name was Andrew Haywood at the time, said, of course it's biased. And if you repeat that, I'll deny it. He put it in his book. The guy denied it. <laughs> Bernard, Bernard Goldberg said I'll, said, I'll take a polygraph and challenge him to take a polygraph. Uh -huh. The other guy didn't do it. So you've gone from there. And he's a liberal, too. So you've Bernard gone from there to the guy denying it to the former head of CBS News admitting it. 
It's gone crazy. The Washington Post in their entire history has never endorsed a Republican for president. No, they didn't. The New York Times has not done it 1956. since 1956. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So what, what do we have? Fox News, talk radio? Well, we have talk you know, radio. We national have, Review. We have, lots of, we have lots of ammo that we didn't have even five years ago. We have Breitbart. We have One America News. We have uh, Newsmax. We have um, uh, Fox News, of course. The we have the networks. Washington Times. We have social media. You have social media stars yeah. like, like uh, Candace, Candace Owens, Owens, who's got probably two, three million yeah. uh, social media followers added up. You have people like Michelle Malkin, uh, who's a media uh, titan in, in her own right. So if people want to get an alternative source of information, they can. they can. It's just up to you to put the effort and time into, into doing it. So you think it's an uphill battle for oh, yeah. Trump? And then, of course, he gets beaten up uh, every night by these late-night comedians. And polls have sh shown that, that young people get between 10 and 15 percent of their news. 10 or 15 percent of young people get their news from watching these uh, late-night comedians stand up. And when they're crapping on Donald Trump, you're just getting a vibe that the country's not yeah. going well. Yeah. And um, Even though he, we've been doing very well economically oh, before this coronavirus. Of course, yeah. Virus. I mean, and, and, even, and even though Obama gave us the worst economic recovery yeah, since 1949, the worst. And it's the first president who ever presided over recovery where we didn't have a single year mm -hmm. where we did at least 3% 3, 3 GDP. And the difference between 2% and 3% is 1 million jobs times the length of the recovery. So recovery was seven years long under, under Obama. So if Obama had just done nothing and we just had a normal recovery, there should have been 7 million more jobs. But he put a bunch of regulations and taxes and rules and depressed an economy that made our, that our, made our rebound much more sluggish than otherwise would have been the case. So you're saying that people like, you know, you know newcomers, you know, uh, you mentored a lot of these people, you know, like Ben Shapiro, mm -hmm. you know, like we mentioned, Candace and Michael Knowles and you know, all well, these. Well, I, I don't want to say I mentored everybody. Oh, not everybody. But, everybody, but, but, everybody. but, but I will say oh, that, uh, that, you, uh, that um, Stephen Miller's parents referred to me as a mentor. Yeah. Ben Shapiro publicly uh, praised me and said that I encouraged him to get into uh, uh, talk news, news talk news commentary talk. and yeah. talk radio. Uh, Andrew Breitbart has publicly said the same thing. Um, I was Michelle Malkin's first uh, time on radio. I had her on my radio show about 20 years ago, and she said that it was the first time she'd ever been on radio. Uh, so I, I introduced Michelle Malkin to a radio audience. Um, the editor-in-chief of Breitbart, um, Marlowe, yeah. uh, was an intern uh, and wor wrote, worked on one of my books. So I've got my fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Uh, everywhere. Place, I got him in the place. media, I got him in the White House, yeah. um, and I'm very proud of that. So if you accumulate all that numbers, you don't think that would um, outnumber the other side, you know, you know um, the, the other mainstream si media? The, Cause, the, other, cause the other side is relentless. And if you look at the top 20 sources of news, 18 of them are to the left. A ABC, NBC, CBS, mm -hmm. New York Times, Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, mm -hmm. Boston, Boston Globe, uh, all the Bay Area newspapers, the, the, the largest newspaper in Dallas, they're all at least the editorial pages are, with few exceptions, left-wing. Even the Chicago Tribune had never endorsed a, rep, a, a, a Democrat until Obama. And then they switched to Obama 2008, 2012. This had been a Republican newspaper. I think out of all the newspapers, out of all the maybe over 1,200 newspapers there are still in the country, I think two or three might have endorsed Trump. Yeah, I think New York Post uh, endorsed him and Did, also one in Las Vegas. Yes, yes and that's it. I mean, even many Republicans didn't speak out in, in, his, in his favor. So what, what do you think about and, those and so, people, you know, so people for him, like you? You were, you know, on the fence about Trump. But how was, about those I, people, you know, who doubted him, but now it's confirmed that he is a, you know, well, tried that's, and true. Well, that's, that's why he's so popular within the Republican Party, because as a Republican, I'm over the moon about the job that he's done. But if you're not a Republican... You hate his uh, yeah. right? You the, know, you want, you want, you want taxes raised. He, he lowered the corporate tax rate. Uh -huh. And... Um, so, so Donald Trump represents uh, a lot of things that give people who don't like Republicans plenty of material. But have you been this excited about a politician uh, other than Trump? Like, were you excited? I, I, I've as not. Much, I, like, I, I've for, not. Like, I, I'm, very, I'm very excited. I, as much as I loved Reagan, uh, I, I, I don't think Reagan took on the media the way this man has. And the media is a fake, fake media. And I don't mean it's that, fake news. It, it is. You know, and, and I don't mean they get stories wrong, although they often do. I'm talking about what they, what they pay attention to. They don't cover the stuff. Why, why is it, to. for example, that most people don't know that Republicans are far more generous, conservatives are far more generous of their time and their money than, Democrat, than liberals are? They give more money to charities, right? It is not even close. 
Uh, it's almost by a, almost a seven or eight to, one, eight to one margin. Republicans give more, conservatives give more, give more time and more money than, than Democrats. But this is not even, not even known. Why is it that most people have no idea that police shootings against blacks are down 75% in the last 50, yeah. 60 years? Mm -hmm. Down dramatically. Yeah, dramatically. Why, why, but the whites didn't change, right? Why is it people don't know that a black college-educated couple were both work out earns a white college educated couple where both work. Well, Why is it people don't know that a married black man has the same low unemployment rate as a white man does? Tr traditionally, the unemployment rate for blacks is twice as high as the unemployment rate for whites. But not if you're a married black man, you're right the same. Hmm. Now, why would that be? Because when you're married, you have more responsibilities, you have more to offer the marketplace. Ergo, the, the reason for the gap has nothing to do with racism. It has to do with your inability to invest in yourself and have the kind of skills that are, that are needed for the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But even all that, all the things that Trump has accomplished, all that, it could be wiped out because of the, what do you, what's your take on the coronavirus situation? I, to me, personally, I thought hydroxychloroquine, you know, one of my coworkers actually got it, mm -hmm. you know, you know COVID-19. I took it. You got treated by hydroxychloroquine right. and also azithromycin, you know, that he mixed no. it up. And it, well, all the people that I know got cured from it. So well, is it a poison well, we, like we, the we, media we shut down the economy based on all sorts of assumptions. Every one of them turned out to be wrong. We were wrong about. I was against it. We were, we were wrong. We were wrong about uh, the way it spreads. We were wrong about uh, uh, how many people are, are asymptomatic. We were wrong about everything, and uh, we were wrong about the projection of the number of people that would that would get it, that would die from it. And as a result, we we, we responded, uh, in my opinion, um, uh, incorrectly, Reckless. incorrectly. And and I know Trump's instincts were to not shut down the government. Yeah. You know, you know, he, he didn't, didn't want, want to, to, but he got overwhelmed by his advisors, uh, who were giving him bad advice. Like Fauci? Yeah, and, and you take Sweden. Sweden is a country that the left claims that they love Sweden. Well, Sweden didn't shut down their economy. They and, criticized Sweden. And, and what, what, Sweden, what the Swedish government did was to apprise people of, of how serious this pandemic is, uh, take it seriously, do, do social distancing, wear masks, don't engage in activity that you don't have to. And as a result, the economy slowed down, uh, but not shut down the way it was in the surrounding Scandinavian countries. And it is true that more Swedes, more Swedes contracted the disease and yeah. have died from it than the surrounding uh, people. But, they're, but the surrounding states are now coming back to work, and most people anticipate a, a spike. So we're going to find out whether over the long haul uh, Sweden saved more lives or lost. But that really, qu frankly, is not really the, the issue. The issue is... I thought the reason we were having these shutdowns is to slow down yeah. the spread of it so that it wouldn't uh, overwhelm our, our, hospitals. our hospital system. Yeah. Well, Sweden's hospital system was never overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so if that was the goal, mission accomplished. But then they changed the goal. Mm -hmm. Now the goal has to be to save, every, save every single life. Nobody should die at all. No trade-offs. And once you change the goalposts, then of course you're going to start criticizing uh, a country that did it differently. Mm -hmm. But Sweden was held up to be a model by people like Bernie Sanders yeah. and the left until I now. Know. I know. So what's your take on hydroxychloroquine? Do you think it's a, it's, it's a hoax? So, I mean, no, uh, no. From what I can tell, uh, people have used it. Uh, I, I got ER docs calling my show, and they told me they used it in, com in combination with other, other drugs, and it's had some effectiveness. I even heard some doctors say it's been effective uh, as a prophylactic, which is how Donald Trump has been using yeah, for, it. For pre prevent it. Yeah, prevention. Yeah, prevention. Right? So um, there's a lot they don't know. I mean, honestly, wouldn't you think they would know whether or not we should be wearing masks? And they can, we went back and forth on that. Do, do plastic gloves work? Back and forth on that. Uh, how likely is it you're going to contract it from a service? Back and forth on that. So, um, and in 1968, Michael, we had what was called the Hong Kong flu. Mm -hmm. If you adjusted for population, 100,000 Americans died. But uh, our population was just 200, 200 million then. We have another 100 million now. You adjusted for population, 150,000 Americans died. I was 16 years old during that pandemic. I don't even remember it. Mm -hmm. I don't even recall it, let alone anybody wearing masks or, or gloves. Yeah. And we've lost more people than we've lost so far. So far, we're at about 120, 115,000. We still have to go up to 35,000 more to make it as serious as a pandemic of 1968. And the media doesn't even talk about that. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. well, so how, do, how should we deal with China? You know, it came out from China. Do you think they should take some accountability? I think they should be I, accountable. Absolutely, they, we should we should sue them. Uh, we should hold them uh, accountable. Uh, they clearly lied about this. Uh, they imprisoned doctors that were telling the truth. Yeah. Uh, they allowed people to leave China, but while restricting restricting travel within their own borders, they exported it. Um, they they lied and said it wasn't human to human transmission, even though they knew uh, knew otherwise. And um, they delayed informing the world about this uh, every day. Every day was precious, and they delayed it for, for a good two or three months, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're complicit. And they should pay the rest of the world a great deal of money. Will they? Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not.
And How are you going to collect it? It's, uh, I, mean, I, we, I mean, we owe, they, they hold a lot of our debt. We could, we could conceivably not pay off the debt, but that'll jack up our credit rating. So uh, I'm not sure we have a whole lot of cards. Yeah. And I think we shouldn't do any, another shutdown anymore. What do you, th oh, what no, do you think? Absolutely not. Shouldn't have, we shouldn't have done the first one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I want to go back to the Black Lives Matter issue. I, I forgot to ask you one more question. Uh, what, do you th what do you think is going to happen from here on out? Do you see riots here in that Was, was yeah. it Walmart that was on fire? Wendy's. When, Wendy's. When, Wendy's, yeah, Wendy's yeah, the Wendy's yeah. restaurant was on yeah. fire. You it, know? it appears and to be. It appears to be isolated. But yeah. but there shouldn't there shouldn't have been any burning. Exactly. Um, what I think is going to happen. I mean, whenever there's a videotape, and you know somebody's videotaping mm -hmm. a black uh, guy being a pre being you know arrested by a white cop, and somehow accidentally. The person dies. We're going to have riots like this, right? I mean, a, a lot of protesting like this. Uh, unfortunately, we've trained um, young people that if something like this happens, it's a reflection of systemic racism. And if if they believe that, if they believe that when somebody gets killed by uh, by the police, uh, it, it, that it regularly happens or routinely happens, why wouldn't I fear that maybe someday it's going to happen to me? Okay. Uh, the, the unfortunate part is it's a lie. And I'll tell you another way of of of, of proving it's a lie. In in California, where you and I are, there's a city called Rialto. Rialto has 100,000 people. And some years ago, uh, they, officers were required to wear body cams. They didn't want to. I guess they didn't feel like they wanted to be tracked. And after a year, something very interesting happened. Police complaints against officers fell 90%. Officer use of force fell 50%. Now, you would you ask yourself, why would officer use of force fall 50%? Oh, they know they were being watched, and therefore they didn't use force. No. The civilians stopped lying, stopped resisting, stopped cursing, because they were being filmed. And as a result, the cops didn't have to use the kind of force well, they had to use before. Okay. Their training was the same. They didn't do anything differently. Civilians did things differently. And my point is, we're looking at all these things that happen. In fact, there are about 50,000 assaults on police officers every single year. Maybe even higher. I heard a number as high as 60,000, but certainly over 50,000. And you look at what happened in Rialto, where all of a sudden people stopped lying on the police. Maybe, just maybe, the civilians need better training. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the cops that need better training. Uh, as I said, I missed the part when my parents sat me down and told me how to deal with, uh, how, to, how to behave when I'm stopped yeah. by the police. I missed the part where after they said, be respectful, be polite, fully cooperate, they then added, violently resist, and if possible, run. I don't remember that part. So it seems to me, so your question is, where's it going to go? Um, I, I encourage all departments to have body cams because the body cams will, A, give us evidence of what happened, but B, more likely vindicate the officer than, than the civilian. Yeah. Uh, we found out that, for example, the big thing that started everything was Michael Brown, hands up, don't yeah. shoot. He lied. He completely, the, 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 the witness, Dorian Johnson, completely lied. He didn't have his hands up, didn't say don't shoot. And um, so the body cams are, are probably going to vindicate officers greater than they will civilians, uh, and it will give us more evidence uh, on what happened. So I encourage all this to happen, but when, it, when, the, when every single police officer has a body cam uh, and a dash cam, to the, to the people right, out, right now in the streets, don't get your expectations real high and think that all of a sudden these kinds of uh, instances are going to go away, because they are rare. And when you look at the, the number of interactions police have every year, I heard, Michael, there is a, a police interaction for every man, woman, and child in this country every single year. That's 350 million interactions with the police, 11 million arrests, 50,000 assaults on the police, and out of all of that, you get down to 1,000 people being killed by the police. Almost all of those were armed or, or were resisting violently or had a weapon or had something that was perceived as being a weapon. You're talking about out of 350 million encounters, a handful of instances where things go wrong. Yeah, right. And we're going nuts. Ridiculous. Yeah. This is my last question. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen in come November 2020 uh, presidential um, House Senate? Trump gets reelected. Um, the Republicans retain control of the Senate. Democrats retain control of the House. Of the House. Mm -hmm. Even though the poll numbers, Trump is way behind. You're, are, are, you, are you wishing Trump is well, going to win? Uh, 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 my fingers are crossed. Uh, I haven't bet the House on, on, on Trump. I, I've given you all the reasons why I, I think he's going to have a more difficult time winning. But all the reasons why he should win are that the country's at peace, uh, the economy is doing well, uh, he's, uh, lived, he's, he's pr pretty much f fulfilled his campaign promises, uh, and if the American people did not hate this man's guts to the extent that they did and gave him a fair shake, he'd be winning in a landslide. That's what I think. Right. Thank you very much, Larry, for stopping by. My pleasure. Yeah.
네, 원영석의 오베드 이번 시간은 여기서 마치도록 하겠습니다. 예, 정말 어, 레리 엘더 어, 정말 귀한 손님 모시고 어, 깊은 얘기를 나눴습니다. 뭐 어, 시위부터 해가지고 트럼프 정부 어, 지난 3년간 어, 어떤 지적들이 있었고 또 어, 향후 전망도 같이 얘기를 나눠봤습니다. 예, 오베드 이번 시간 여기서 마치도록 하겠고요. 어, 많은 구독 바랍니다. 예, 알람 버튼 좀 눌러주시기 바랍니다. 감사합니다.